Um, if you go right back to 1897, um, the land around where we are at the moment was purchased by George Causton, who was um, a wealthy English stockbroker. He found, quite by coincidence, the village of Causton. So he thought, well, this is rather appropriate. If I buy myself some land around here, I can build myself a lovely manor house and become Causton of Causton. So where we are at the moment, they sunk a well here in the wood and they built this incredible water tower, ten-sided. He employed Sir Ernest George, who was a very well-known architect down in London, and he's done it in Dutch style. So they sunk the water tower, laid a big water pipe right the way through, and then they built um, Causton Manor. George Causton lived in there with his wife. They had one son um, called Cecil, and tragically, Cecil was killed in the Boer War in, um, I think it's about 1901, and he was um, nursed as he was dying on the battlefield um, by his best friend, um, who'd also got partly severed arm, and his father was so, so upset by the whole episode that he'd lost his only son that he got all his belongings in a huge great big chest from the manor house and had them secretly buried by the gardeners. I knew the tower was here because I'd remembered it from our days at the college. But I had no idea that the tower was redundant. Um, the big cast iron pipe that ran from the tower all the way up to the college had fractured and it was hemorrhaging huge amounts of water. It was bought from the college by Jerry Youngs, the local farmer, and he wanted to use it because the actual tower contains a hundred foot well inside and he wanted to still use that well to supply his son's house just over the road called Linwood. When I came up here to look after his combine harvester, I had to do some air conditioning on the combine harvester. I looked into the woods and I, there was the tower still there. And making some inquiries, I had no idea that he owned it, but he, having told me he owned it, he gave me first refusal on it. What was the biggest technical problem on this building? My wife's 50th birthday. I thought I'd cheer up. She plays the piano and I thought, would it be nice if I can get her a little little baby grand piano? And I vanished, found one in the auction rooms at Aylsham for £150. So I thought, I'll buy that. So I bought it and then I had the major headache of how on earth do I get it up to the tank room in the top of the tower? So what I did was I, I stripped it down with a friend and we pulled it up with a block and tackle, the whole main frame, and it weighs about half a ton. And then um, it was all cleaned up and reassembled up in the tank room, ready for my wife to play. But everything in this tower is bespoke. All the kitchen had to be completely handmade because you, you just can't buy um, kitchens at 36 degrees. When you were renovating the well, uh, was there anything interesting found in there? It had a wooden cover to it and there was no lighting, nothing. And I can remember taking off this wooden cover and peering down into this black depth. And it was really intimidating. I mean, there was, God, there was filth. There was canned bits of old cans had been dropped down there. We had to start pumping and all this muck and sludge came out of it and I pumped for about three weeks. Came across all sorts of fascinating artefacts, Victorian pennies, little hammers that obviously um, had been dropped down over the years, ginger beer bottles. Have you got any plans for the future? Are you going to live here? So we have bought, built the granny annex and the bedroom down below um, is designed for frailty. Mm -hmm. So I'm making it so that if I become um, a bit, you know, unsteady on my feet, I haven't got to go up 68 stairs to the top. I can just go on ground level.